Last month, I went to Beyonce's formation tour. And I watched the entire row in front of me pose and take selfies of themselves and their friends. Look, I was taken with them. I watched them as much as I watched Beyonce. Because I knew what they were doing, and it's not what most people think. Drowned in their own reflection, they were sovereign, reigning over time and space, with rights over all glory, fortune, and sensual pleasure. There they were, marking their place in history. With their selfies, they declared, I am here. I am here in this moment, in this space, connected to you where you are. The selfie is a vehicle for the intimacy and immediacy of connection. We don't tend to think about the selfie in this way, but even Kim Kardashian selfies, which are notoriously criticized for their narcissism, speak to the sense of connection, intimacy, immediacy, and power. In 2014, this selfie, posted by a Twitter subscriber, Princess Brianna, from the Auschwitz concentration camp, created an outrage over the flippancy and narcissism of its maker. And, uh, as, uh, and really as the representative of millennial culture. And look, that's probably the most obvious thing one could say about a generation that everyone seems to think is um, obsessed with, their, with, the, with themselves. A generation that is not really present, not ever really here. The truth is that Princess Brianna's selfie belongs to a whole genre of selfies taken at Auschwitz. This one was criticized for being Instagrammed and hashtagged Auschwitz selfie. Hashtag tragic. People find the Auschwitz selfies as obnoxious and as outrageous as the public found this selfie taken by the heads of state at Nelson Mandela's memorial. They find it as disrespectful and as superficial as these hard selfies taken by Muslims on pilgrimage in Mecca. In my research, I found that beyond magnifying the hype around the narcissism of our era, these objections to the selfie teach us what the selfie actually is. This front-facing camera captures the intimate details of our everyday lives and monumentalizes them as the essence of history. The selfie as a networked object is a vehicle for the intimacy and immediacy of our connections. A networked object is what connects me where I am with you over where you are. So a selfie as a networked object is not just a photograph. No one would seriously object to Princess Brianna having someone else take a photograph of her at Auschwitz. A selfie connects you, your touch, with your image. And because it is meant to be shared, it is networked in the very moment of its making. We don't tend to think about the selfie in this way. We want to insist that the selfie is just a picture, just a photograph. But if it were just a picture, would people be so up in arms about us taking selfies in serious places? The 15th century mirror, which one could say is the selfie's ancestor, really had the same function as the selfie does today. It was such an experience to see our own reflection for the first time in the 15th century that we, we thought of the, the mirror as this magical object. We integrated it into, into our everyday lives and also in, into some very bizarre sacred rituals. So this is, this is the deal. 
pilgrims would pack a mirror in, uh, and take them on their, on their pilgrimage. And when they arrived at the, the, the sacred site, they would position themselves so that they would capture the reflection of the bones in the mirror. And then when they went home, they would show the mirror off to their friends and family as a physical evidence of having been there at the sacred site. So the selfie, like the magical 15th century mirror says, I am here in this moment, and this moment is sacred. In fact, that's the short version of Princess Brianna's story. So before that, the whole Auschwitz selfie scandal, she had been studying the history of the Holocaust with her dad. And this had been going on for a while, and then her dad suddenly died. So when she arrived at Auschwitz, she wanted to have a way to remember him, memorialize him. And she took and posted this selfie as a way to say, look, Daddy, I'm here. I wish you were here. The I am here of the selfie makes the everyday life of the ordinary individual part of the unfolding of history. Histories were previously written about the powerful, right? And experienced painters were hired to make portraits of them. The aristocracy and their objects were painted in these portraits. And when we look at the portraits now, we think of the impact that they had on history. Selfies make the ordinary life of the individual part of history. Every moment has significance. Every moment has significance from the perspective of history, and the selfie makes every moment part of history's unfolding. The selfie makes even the grandest things human and intimate. And I think quite apart from um, it being a great way to leave your autograph. That's why all the front runners in presidential campaigns and Hillary Clinton too use the selfie around their fan base, right? The selfie humanizes everything. It humanizes Hillary, right? It says, I'm here, I'm here with you, I'm here as you, as one of the people. I think it's really helpful to think about the selfie in terms of its true ancestor, the concept of the people. In 2009, I came to this conclusion that the people was the ancestor, the ur form, the ancient ancestor of the selfie. Now, selfies didn't exist at the time, but I mean, I'm sorry, the term selfie didn't exist at the time, but, but selfies did exist that summer Millions of people took to the streets to protest what they believed was a rigged presidential election in Iran. Millions of people around the world joined them. They did so online. Now, they didn't know anything about Iran or the presidential election, but what they did know was that they were inspired by a people's uprising. And they joined them on Twitter and Facebook and YouTube to ensure that their voices were heard. That summer, I noticed this recognition among thousands of people everywhere that we could be each other's eyes and ears. There was a sense of immediacy and connection. They posted and we saw it. They heard and we heard it. They felt and we felt it too. And within minutes, we could log on to YouTube and watch a video of what was going on thousands of miles away. In the first week, of the protests, the government started retaliating against the protesters. People were being killed and they were afraid. The virality of the image felt very much like a way to protect the people. So that summer when someone posted a picture on Twitter, it went immediately viral. The virality of the image, or literally its spreadability, felt like a real way to protect the protesters from the lawlessness of those who were in power. 
In a practical sense, what people realized was that a, an image posted on social media wasn't just a photograph. It was a networked object, part flesh, part data, connecting one person's eyes up close with the eyes of millions elsewhere. There was a very a significant difference between the photos that were coming out from the Iran election protests and images that we'd seen from the Iranian revolution in 1978. The camera in the Iran election protests wasn't distant, detached, or objective. It was part of the uprising. It was, it was implicated in the protests. It, it looked through the eyes of the people. It was connected to the body of the people. Iran election selfies became a tool in a new kind of journalism, citizen journalism, where the documentation of violence and injustice and the celebration and solidarity of the people was linked to the vulnerable bodies of the protesters. Literally, people wielded their vulnerable bodies in these selfies and reclaimed a right that was denied them. Now, this isn't just true about the Iran election selfies, the hundreds of protests that followed from Egypt in 2011 to the We Are Not This campaign for transgender rights here in North Carolina. Selfies are used in a similar way. In the intimate space of the bathroom, this body speaks to the vulnerability of the transgendered body. The hashtag that accompanies it, we just need to pee, speaks to the vulnerabilities, the needs, and the rights of the people, of the human body. The sacrificial nature of this selfie speaks to the rights and the needs of the people generally. It reminds me of the way that, um, that about six months into the Iran election protest, Iranian men unveil their, their faces, they, they expose their faces to state surveillance. Um, in the early days of, of the protests, government forces were using photographs to identify protesters. And so people hid their faces. But when a student at Tehran University was arrested and put into women's clothes as a way to humiliate him, Iranian men donned the veil in solidarity, took selfies of themselves, and posted these on social media as their social media avatars. Right, and in this way, they exposed themselves to state surveillance. The sacrificial bodies of these vulnerable heroes stand alongside these selfies for the rights of the people. Every selfie has a story, and the ordinary individual is the hero of that story. That ordinary and everyday life of the individual is woven into the narrative of history through the selfie. And that's what the row of selfie takers at Beyonce's concert taught me. Yes, they had paid to come and see the Queen Bee herself, but they own the narrative of that momentous occasion. They documented everything and shared themselves, the, shared of themselves as part of a record of a history in which a ticket to the Beyonce concert formed a mere backdrop. <sighs> Millennials are criticized for their disconnection and their self-obsession, uh, self for their lack of presence. But in their, in the I am here, which is the message of the selfie, millennials invite us to rethink presence and to see ourselves as part digital beings, recognizing that presence 
in real space is as much a geotag on a social media platform as a geotag is, 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 is a real space. Think of the power of the geotag Gezi or Tahrir. Google that, and what you will retrieve is a history of a people's uprising against despotic power and the virtual and the actual spaces in which those revolts took place. The selfie heralds a new age of digital connection. It is the currency of intimacy and presence. But to see it as the imprint of the people, we need to choose to see with other eyes. So you guys, let's get the light and let us take a selfie.